but I guess the question will be, you know, whatever this bill looks like when it passes the house, because I assume it's probably going to pass the house, um, and then it goes over to the Senate, you know, what does the Senate do with it? Um, you know, you have some very fairly pro-gun, um, I don't, don't want to say pro-gun, but pro, pro-Second pro Amendment senators out there, even some Democrats that, that are particularly pro-Second Amendment. So do I think this is going to pass? I mean, hopefully not, but I think it's a really good illustration of kind of where the, the two sides of this argument are right now. And it's uh, it's definitely the most most radical gun law I think I've ever seen. Yeah, it's definitely taken it in a direction that, um, you know, obviously should raise a lot of challenge, one would hope. Um, but it is a big part of, you know, that it made it to the floor in this form, you know, that it was really proposed from someone who's from Texas, um, even though she's, you know, from a, a fairly large Demo Democrat um, constituency in Houston, I would, or the Houston area, I would tell you, like, you're, you're still Texas, the heart of Texas, right? I mean, and so, you know, this is a conversation that's not going away. The, you know, every time the legislation comes up, it comes up in a different fashion, and it seems to be moving further and further along this trajectory, which is, you know, it's scary. You know, it's really something that I think individuals really need to pay attention to. And we talked about it before, right? Politics, the, you know, where you, where politics, where the rubber meets the road in politics is really going to be locally. And so sure. paying attention to the, the vote that you cast for the individuals that are proposing laws are going to come up. But not only that, but then once they do come up, really paying attention what it is that they're proposing happen. Um, so, you know, I think this is going to get obviously a lot of that's conversation. A good, but That's a good point you make because there was a bill even just before the Texas legislature this year where a, 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 a representative was looking at um, trying to repeal the Castle Doctrine in Texas, which is a big, a big law in Texas. That's uh, something that we Texans <laughs> are very, very, uh, very, very sensitive to. And um, that was the you can't shoot somebody that breaks into your home. I mean, I think that's yeah, you know that no retreat. Yeah, basically. So what yeah. do you, you know, what do you do in that situation? I mean, I think um, it's just it's a, it's there's not a lot of middle ground on on, on some of these things. Whether I think there could be um, because nobody wants a school shooting. Nobody wants you know those those things to happen. Those are obviously horrible tragedies, and you know they don't need to happen. But you know, at the same time, I think there's some sensible middle ground in here, but nobody seems to be concerned about middle ground anymore. It's it's all one way or the other, right? Yeah, I mean, middle ground, I don't even know what that means anymore, but I, I agree with you. I, I mean, do we think exist. a three-year-old should be able to own a Uzi? No, of course not. No, you know? but I do feel like that, you know, what if it's your home and you want your family to be safe because you travel, they should be able to, you know, own and possess a firearm. Um, you know, these are things that, you know, help offer families and individuals a sense of security and peace of mind. Uh, and I think that, you know, challenging that, you know, informationally and process wise um, by passing these types of laws is an extreme challenge to that fundamental liberty that we've enjoyed for a long period, a long time. Uh, but and it's my definitely personal, my personal opinion on it, this, this, the Second Amendment you have, you know, that the, the purpose behind the Second Amendment is not to not so you can have a deer rifle. It's it's to have be able to own a firearms to protect yourself and you know, protect from, you know, theoretically a tyrannical government. That's why they, that, that's why the founders thought it was important. The framers thought it was important to have this law or have this yeah. amendment in the constitution to protect, protect yourself, depending on, you know, depending on what the particular threats of the day are. And if you want to talk about restrictive ownership, I mean, like nothing is more restricted currently other than maybe like, you know, certain, you know, certain types of maybe like plutonium or some, <laughs> you know, uh, as far as, you know, owning something as guns. The laws on the books across the states, across this country are voluminous, voluminous. And it hasn't stopped gun violence in this country. It's not, you know, I, I, I get it. I understand that part of the conversation and I want to fix, you know, I want it to be where, you know, we don't have this except to defend yourself in the worst situation at the last minute and to keep your family safe. But unfortunately that's happening more and more everywhere, everywhere. It's right. not just at home. It's in your car. It's at the mall. You know, people, you know, they, there's all kinds of news reports about, you know, people getting assaulted and attacked. Hell, it's at our freaking capital. So do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it doesn't matter where you are. These are things that are really 
that we've utilized and have been implemented you know, since the inception of our constitution to afford individuals the right to have the ability to protect themselves and maintain that against all comers. And I think that's important. I think it's something that we need to continue to protect. And if we're gonna try to limit it, it needs to be really well thought out. And that conversation between both sides need to be very open and honest about what it's really designed to try to do. Because this I mean, and all, me, things, and, and all things being fair, I mean, I think there are some, some middle ground that that people can agree to in here where you know you don't want to give give you know allow the mentally ill to have you know access to firearms and things like that i mean that's obviously that's something that's a no brainer right and you just have to you have to you have to balance you know the need for public safety with respect to the need for you know having a a constitutional right well a, a good example would be if you want to make sure nobody dies in a traffic accident well have no cars then no one can die right. in a traffic. Well, that's not that's not society. That's not that's not how society functions. And you know, people feel the same way about guns. You know, you can you can come up with sensible sensible alternatives to this where you you know can keep the the guns out of the hands of the most risky, but at the same time, you know, this seems to be like a, a dramatic government overreach to private citizens who are, like you said, law abiding citizens. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoyed the Top Texas Lawyers podcast. If you'd like a consultation with either Brian or Sam, please call 1-888-981-7509 or visit us on the web at astxlegal.com. Once again, that's astxlegal.com. Thank you very much.